The Two Josephs and Me Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. This is a story about two men who were each named Joseph. We read about these two Josephs in the Bible. And until recently, I had never given much thought to how they were so closely related. But when I began to consider each of their relationships with our Savior Jesus, the Lord began to speak to my heart of how sweet a story their two lives have turned out to be. So, I decided to put these thoughts and ideas down on paper in order to share that sweet story with others. Hopefully, it will bless your heart and life in the way it has mine. The first Joseph was a poor young carpenter from Nazareth who fell in love with a beautiful girl named Mary. We don't know many details about the history of their relationship, but at the point in the Bible where we come into their lives, they were what we would call engaged. Those of us who love the Lord also know and love the story of their relationship told by Matthew and Luke, especially the part told in chapter 2 of Luke that describes many details leading up to the birth of Jesus. This first Joseph was a hard-working man who probably had strong calloused hands and a suntanned body from his occupation of building houses and other structures. This is what he did in order to earn a living that would eventually provide for his family. He would also someday train Jesus, whom many people thought to be his son, all of the skills of a carpenter. We will shortly return to this part of the story, but about right now you may be wondering who this second Joseph might be. The second Joseph is the one we know of as Joseph of Arimathea. The first Joseph appears in the Bible around the birth of Jesus, while the second Joseph appears in the Bible around the death of Jesus. And in both instances, they each show their love and concern for the well-being of our Savior's physical body. The second Joseph was nothing at all like the first Joseph, as far as this world is concerned. The first Joseph was a poor, hard-working man who had very little money. We know this because of the sacrifice he bought to the temple about 20 days after the circumcision of Jesus. Wealthy people were expected to bring a lamb as a sacrifice. Poor people were allowed, according to Jewish law, to bring two simple turtle doves. Because that was the sacrifice that Joseph and Mary brought, this is a good indication that the first Joseph was poor. The Bible calls this second Joseph a rich man and an honorable counselor, which tells us that he was among the ruling class of the Jewish nation. In fact, he knew Pilate well enough to boldly go to his house at night to request the body of Jesus. The second Joseph was wealthy enough to have previously paid to have his own family tomb hewn out of the stone in a garden in the area near the crucifixion of Jesus. Now that we have considered the differences between these two men, let us consider the many similarities between the two. I will begin with how both of them were willing to bear a great deal of embarrassment because of their relationship with Jesus. The first Joseph lived for about nine months bearing the shame that his Jewish family and friends felt toward him because he remained faithful to his espoused wife Mary, who was with child. Under Jewish law, he was legally allowed to put her away or divorce her, knowing that the child she bore was not conceived by him. But our loving God had consoled him through an angel in a dream that the child conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. And the first Joseph loved God so much that he took him at his word and lived with the shame. The second Joseph was also willing to bear the shame and embarrassment of his relationship with Jesus. The Bible tells us that he was a good man and just, but up until the death of Jesus on the cross, he felt as though he had to keep his belief in Jesus as the Son of God a secret. He could not allow this newfound faith in Jesus to be known because of the offices and position he held. If this became public knowledge, he would lose all he had gained over the years. He would be removed from those important offices he held and probably would have lost his source of substantial income. 
and I cannot say what must have gone through his mind and heart on the day they nailed Jesus to the cross, but I am assuming that when he saw the blood of Jesus flowing from his body, the things of this world were no longer important to him. It must have been at that point where he chose to go and request Jesus' body from Pilate. Now we know that both of these men had a deep love for our Savior Jesus. The first Joseph showed his love for Jesus before he was born and from then on. And the second Joseph displayed his love for Jesus following his death. Imagine for a moment the first few hours that the first Joseph spent with the baby Jesus. I am quite sure he is probably the one who wrapped Jesus in the swaddling clothes mentioned in the book of Luke. And, as I understand it, swaddling clothes consist of narrow bands of cloth that are carefully wrapped around a newborn baby. If you can picture in your mind Joseph finishing that loving task and then finding one of his fingers being softly grasped and squeezed by the little fingers of Jesus, as infants often tend to do, imagine how he must have smiled and thanked God for that precious moment. Then he gently laid that precious little body down into the manger and looked lovingly at those little hands as he stepped away to let Jesus fall asleep. Now try to picture in your mind those things that the second Joseph must have been doing during the hours following Jesus' death. The book of Mark briefly describes how after being given permission by Pilate, the second Joseph went and bought some fine linen then took Jesus down from the cross and wrapped him in it. This fine linen was also cut into narrow strips of cloth in the same manner as the swaddling cloth. And as the second Joseph lovingly wrapped the precious body of Jesus in that linen cloth, I am quite sure he was just as careful as the first Joseph must have been in handling his body. Then he carefully laid Jesus' body in the tomb as gently and loving as the first Joseph had laid Jesus in that manger. I can imagine he had tears in his eyes and many thoughts racing through his mind as he stepped away and left that body laying there in the tomb, just as still and quiet as it had once been laying in that manger. Can you imagine some of the thoughts that must have passed through his mind as he removed the nails from that cross? I'm quite sure that he must have held a tight grasp on Jesus' hand, holding it as he lovingly removed each nail from that wooden cross. I don't suppose he gave much thought to how tiny and soft those hands once had been 33 years earlier. There is one more thought that comes to mind relating to the similarity between these two men. The first Joseph spent many years with Jesus teaching him the art of carpentry. I can imagine there were many times when the first Joseph stood with pride as he watched Jesus as a child struggling to hammer a nail into a piece of wood. If you are a parent, you know the feeling of wanting to step in and help, but knowing that this is something which that child must learn on his own. So, the first Joseph probably watched with pride and an aching heart as Jesus became the carpenter the first Joseph wanted him to be. And I can imagine that if the second Joseph was there as the Roman soldiers hammered those nails, he also may have wanted to step in to prevent what was taking place. And if he was there, he did not stand with pride, as the first Joseph had as he watched Jesus hammering nails. At least up until that point, it was as if the second Joseph was ashamed to be a friend of Jesus. But we know without a doubt that his heart was changed because of those nails that day. So those are just a few of the similarities and differences between these two Josephs that loved Jesus enough to care for his hands and feet. And I don't know how you feel about this love story, but I am guessing that Jesus' real Father in heaven must have watched both of these men with a tear in his eye as they did all the things they could do to care for his son. Now, if you can recall the title of this devotional, remember, it is The Two Josephs and Me. But where do I come into this picture? And where would you come into this picture? I myself need to recognize that 
Just as these two individual men displayed such loving care and devotion to the one who died for them, I also, as an individual, need to recognize that all of this was done for Jesus so that I could be so physically close to him as to touch those precious fingers myself someday in heaven. And just as the sight of Jesus' blood may have been the one thing that turned the second Joseph's life around and gave him whatever it took to do what he did, that same blood still gives us whatever it takes to do what we can do for our Lord. Jesus can be just as close as us today as he was to those two Josephs. We simply need to remember and recognize that. And since the day that I realized how true it was, it has been my desire to do all I can to wrap my little fingers around his loving hand and be as much like the two Josephs as I can. So that's the story of the two Josephs and me, and there is no reason that you too cannot be a part of that same story. God bless.